Safety camera vans, cash cows, revenue collectors, we've heard it all. More importantly, how does it work and how does it improve road safety in the UK? You won't have seen this anywhere else, so stick around and we'll show you all around the van and answer all your questions. So we've come to this site today to meet the camera van. And the reason the camera van is here because this site has been raised by the local community as a community concern regarding speeding. As you can see, it's outside of a school. We've got a crossing down there for people collecting and crossing the road. And the community have raised it because of the speed of the vehicles going past. So let's have a jump inside the van uh, and let's have a look, see if we can see what the average speed of the cars is as they're coming past. Now the cameras inside the van are normally operated by members of police staff. Now the chief constable can designate suitable powers to the members of police staff in order for them to perform this role. So it's not normally a police officer that you will find in here. However, today I'm going to have a little play with the equipment. I'm not going to be enforcing whilst I'm here, but I'm I'm just showing you how the equipment works and what we use it for. So Owen, I take it this is your first time actually using a speed camera van? It is in the van, yeah, and quite clearly I'm terrible at it. So there's a van coming around the corner now, although you're not enforcing speed, how does that camera itself work and what can it pick up on? So that van was doing 28 as he came off of the bend, um, so we're happy with that. And nothing it, wrong with that at all? Absolutely nothing wrong with that, so 18 mile per hour on that one. Um, and at the end of the day, the camera van, it's doing its job just by being here and people are slowing down. I'm sure they're probably getting flashed by cars going the other way as well. But again, if that slows the traffic down, it's job done for us. What's the deal then with all the CCTV cameras that are set up here? The CCTV cameras are to protect our officers that are in the van. So, you know, they've got a full 360 degree view around the van. So the camera can get the cars coming towards us and also the cars going away from us as well. Um, and for vehicles that don't have front number plates like motorbikes, there's a camera on the roof that can get the vehicles that have come past us and are going past in the other direction. So as you can see, we've got the crossing here, we've got the school over there, and then another 100 yards up the road is the camera van. It's perfectly obvious, it's not hiding. We don't hide them behind bushes because the cameras wouldn't be able to see the vehicles. People say, well, they're round blind bends. Well, in that case, if it's a blind bend, why are you speeding around the blind bend? And that's exactly why the camera is there. So every site that we use them on, they're all risk assessed. Uh, and the cameraman up there, like I said, is very, very obvious. If you can't see that, then maybe it's your observation that needs improving. So the school crossing was about 100 yards from the van, but about 200 yards from the van, we've got the bus stop and we've also got Ottery St. Mary Hospital. So there are two more reasons why we don't want speeding cars coming around that bend. One thing you probably didn't realise was that the camera vans have a range of about a thousand metres. So if you've seen the camera van, it's probably too late and it's already seen you. So any video we ever do on speed enforcement always generates a lot of comments and a lot of feedback um, with regards to revenue raising and Christmas parties and all that kind of thing. Well, we've been here today, we've been here for, what, 10 minutes. We've had nobody over the speed of 34. So it's obvious that the just the presence of this van is doing enough to slow people down. So ultimately it's doing its job. And you know, we don't want to give people tickets because if people get points and a fine, we don't see any of that money. That goes straight into the treasury. The only money that goes back into road safety is money that is generated by doing the speed awareness courses and things like that. Because although you have to pay for things like the hire of the venue and the people to take the course, it would be the extra money on top that would go directly back into road safety. And that then allows us to go out and target things like drink driving, drug driving, and all the different areas of road safety that we have to enforce on. So that money is generated and then that goes straight back into that and that's, you know, that's where that money goes to. It certainly doesn't go to anything like Christmas parties. So you've got to the bit that you've all been waiting for. We've had a really good look around the safety camera van. We've taken you out, we've shown you it in action, but I've been going through Google and I've been looking for some of the most commonly asked questions around safety camera vans. The first one that I'm going to answer is about obstructing the van. So people ask about whether you can stand in front of the camera or whether you can flash people coming the other way. And the answer technically to that is no, you can't because that is obstruct police. If you're gonna stand in front of the camera, they can't be doing their job properly. You're obstructing them from doing that. If you're flashing cars coming the other way, okay, you're slowing the cars that are coming down. So that works for us because it's slowing down the traffic. But would you flash a burglar and tell them that the police are coming? 
probably not, and it's kind of the same principle. Let's go on to question two. So the second most popular question on Google is around modern safety equipment and brakes on cars. And with them being so much better, should the speed limits now not be raised? Well, if you think about it, yes, obviously the safety equipment on the cars is much better than it was, but you've still got the same person behind the wheel and the majority of collisions that we go to are down to driver error and your reaction time is exactly the same in this car as it would be in a car from 30 years ago. So that doesn't really help. If we look at the auto bands as well, on the areas that are unrestricted with speed, they have a 25% higher fatal rate when it comes to the collisions. So the auto bands are still very, very dangerous. Okay, so question number three, this is the question, are you cash cows or revenue collectors? Well, I mean, quite honestly, look, the van is massively marked. It's so highly visible. If you can't see it, then, you know, maybe there's an issue going on there that you need to check about your observation or your eyesight. Um, but we don't need to mark it up. There's nothing in law that says we've got to mark up these vehicles. There's nothing in law that says we've got to put these signs out to tell you that they're out there. So we could have this as a perfectly plain vehicle if we wanted just to collect revenue. So that's not what it's about. What this van is about is slowing people down on the road. But what you've also got to remember is driving is a privilege, it's not a right. And when you signed up to get your driving license, you signed up to follow the rules. And the rules are there for your safety. And speed limits are one of those massive things that is all about your safety on the road. So please stick to the speed limit, don't get caught by one of these vans and then everybody's happy. Before you guys shoot off, why not check out our new series all about modifying our very own police car in true Jack McNeil style. You help us, we'll do what you ask for. So go across, check that out.